Hello, my friends. Good morning. May God bless you all. And may the Holy Spirit open our understanding so that we may comprehend His voice, His word, and consequently we will be able to obey it and then reap the fruits of obedience. And I've been speaking about prayer, isn't it? And when you, when we read the Psalms, the Psalms, what are the Psalms? What are the Psalms? When you read Psalms and you feel good, right? For example, when you are going through a difficult moment, you read Psalm 91 and you read and you feel relieved, isn't it? You have a problem in your finances and you go to Psalm 23, Psalm of David that says, the Lord is my shepherd and so on. So what are the Psalms? Why did God allow that we would have access to the Psalms. Firstly, Psalms are prayers. Did you know that? Psalms are prayers from people or the psalmists that experienced a living hell here on earth. That's it. That's it. And also, they are prophetic. Many psalms of David reflect the suffering that Jesus went through, that he groaned when he came into this world. So, if we think and evaluate and meditate well in the psalms, then they are prayers. Prayers of people who are afflicted, desperate. Of course, when David was well, he would praise the Lord. And this way, God is teaching us today, Christians, people of the faith, right? He's teaching us how we should behave in the face of tribulations and trials and moments of joy, moments of pleasure, how should we behave? So, when you read the Psalms, you can evaluate well in each word, in each verb, you see there either a pain, a suffering, an anguish, or also joy. You can read there that David says, Save me, O God, for I am sinking in deep mire where there is no standing. My soul is afflicted, suffocated, and things of this nature. So what David went through or the Psalms, like Asaph, for example. Asaph speaks of the fact that he was envious. See, he was a man of God, faithful to God, God-fearing, but he was envious of those who were wicked and apparently were thriving in life. But he didn't see their end. He didn't see how they ended, for sure. Those who live in wickedness, they can thrive for a moment. Those who lie, they can succeed for a moment. Those who live in corruption, they can prosper for a moment. Those who have power in their hands to judge and condemn, they can break through for a moment. But there will come a time... There will come a day just like death. Death comes to everyone. And when the moment comes or the moment that anticipate death, these people who lived in sin, in unrighteousness, in lies, in corruption, these people who are evil, they will know before going down to the grave, they will know what despair, 
what despair of the soul is when it is about to leave this world and be taken to a place of torment and pain. Therefore, my dear friend, use your reasoning, your ability to think and see how these men who were of God groaned in their respective times, especially David, who was persecuted and envied and defamed and slandered. He also made many mistakes. He also brought trouble upon himself. And he suffered until the end. You are going to see in, in this series, Kings, what David went through. For example, right now, you are watching him getting married with one and another, marry another woman, and so on. And he was, he was being greedy, greedy, because he married a lot of women, and later on, you are going to see what he went through because of those women. So, my friend, in his suffering or in the suffering of the psalmist, you see the anguish that they faced. And God is giving us, is giving you, because when you read the book of Psalms, you, you enjoy it. And perhaps the psalm that you read comes to meet your need, your anguish, because in that day that was said, that was prayed and cried out to God, they were experiencing what you are experiencing today. So what do we have to do? What was the secret of David's victory? His secret was the prayer. That's it. Prayer. When he fell, he committed a terrible sin, terrible, terrible sin. Then you can see on Psalm 51 his prayer of repentance. He repented. But his repentance wasn't something, oh Lord, I, I repent. No, he groaned to the point that he said, Lord, please don't take your spirit away from me. Don't remove the spirit of joy from me. It means that David experienced the cruelest moment that a human being can go through here on earth, which was a reflection of what Jesus would suffer later on. He would suffer. Not that Jesus had committed a sin, not at all, but he suffered, he groaned, because he, firstly, he undressed from his divine nature to dress as a man, flesh, human being, and had to face men, the cruelty, the injustice, things that there in heaven he didn't have to face. So Jesus groaned. He suffered. He was the man who suffered the most on the face of the earth. The one who suffered the most. David, without knowing it, without knowing it, he was prophesying his pain, he was speaking to God, making his prayers and cry out, and already prophesying what the Lord, the Savior, the Messiah would suffer later on. The prophet Isaiah says that Jesus was a man of sorrows, the one who suffered the most, humiliated, a man whose faces people would hide from, despised, according to him, not esteemed at all. And that's how Jesus was. Therefore, dear friend, 
The secret of David, as it was the secret of the Lord Jesus as well, was the prayer. You can verify that when Jesus was taken by the Holy Spirit to the desert to be tempted, that Jesus started to fast, fast and pray, obviously, because he knew that as a man, he had to be strong in order to face and overcome the devil. Showing like this that it's possible for you, in your human nature, we, in our human nature, can face the devil, hell, and overcome. So what was the weapon David used? What tool did he use to defend himself and to overcome like Jesus did? What was the weapon that they used in order to overcome evil. They used prayer. Prayer is a tool, or better, a weapon to attack and to defend as well ourselves. To attack because Jesus teaches us to pray like this. Pay attention. Do not lead us into temptation, which means when the person prays, they give in such a way, they give themselves that they cry out, they beg God to not lead them into temptation because they know their flesh is weak. Deliver us from the evil one. You see it here. It means that prayer is a weapon of defense, a shield to protect us from evil. So we have to use prayer. The Lord's Prayer, as we said yesterday, is a prayer that is complete. It's perfect because it was the Lord Jesus himself who gave this weapon to us. He gave this tip for all of us to pray this way. I pray. I continue to pray. But I don't pray the Lord's Prayer as I said yesterday anyhow, quickly. No. I pay attention, please. When you pray, you have to join the strength of your, of your spirit what you want alongside your feelings, which is your soul. So you join together the spirit and the soul and you put all your strength into what you are speaking to God about. That means that the prayer of Jesus here is a complete prayer. Why? Because it involves all of our needs, our daily bread, whether in our health or the physical bread, the spiritual bread, the emotional bread. My Lord, give, give this to us today. This is a way of you having in the day of today exactly what you need. But you have to put your spirit and your soul joined together there, there in what you are saying. Did you understand? You can't, for example, pray, ask God, oh, deliver us from the evil one. And in your mind, in your heart, you say, oh, deliver us from evil. But in your mind, you are thinking, you are thinking of something else, going elsewhere else in your mind. No, your, your mind has to be with your heart, meaning your spirit and your soul and all of your strength into what you are praying. Jesus says like this, pay attention, pay close attention. Forgive us our debts. Here in the mind, in the mind. Forgive us our debts, our sins, our mistakes and flaws, our mistakes in general. Forgive us. You're asking forgiveness. 
praying, asking for forgiveness. Forgive us because we fail. We all fail. So forgive us. We intelligently use this word that Jesus teaches. Now, you have the other side of the coin that he says, as we forgive our debtors, this you have to say here in your soul as well. This you have to desire as well here in your soul. This you have to long for in your soul as well. But how? Come on. Lord, forgive me, but I, in the heart you say, oh, I don't want to forgive so-and-so that offended me. No, you put your mind and your soul in one accord, in agreement with what you are speaking to God about. This is a prayer. So this prayer will be answered for sure because you are putting all of your being, the essence of your being, into what you are speaking to God. And God is Father, right? He is the provider of all things, of everything. So, dear friend, learn this, practice this, and you are going to see that your life is going to be different. It doesn't matter the church you belong to, or the no denomination you attend, if you are from a church or not, or whatever church, if you practice this prayer, this complete prayer of Jesus, the Lord's Prayer, you can be sure that you are going to see a crucial, huge difference in your life day after day, after day, you will conquer and achieve what Jesus promised in his word. Life and life with abundance. All right? So, I wanted to invite you, for example, today, in all the universal churches of the kingdom of God, all over the world, we work with deliverance. Deliverance. We do the deliverance prayers. If you have any problem that you need to be delivered from, there is a negative energy in you, come to the Universal Church and you are going to be delivered from this negative energy and you are going to absorb the positive energy. If you are that person who is, let's say, you are a victim of witchcraft, voodoo, black magic, envy, jealousy, any type of curse, then today is the day of deliverance. And Sunday, we are going to be participating of the Lord's Supper. On Sunday, we are going to participate of the bread of the angels, the bread that descended from heaven, which is Jesus, that gives us life. This Sunday now, in all the universal churches of the kingdom of God, we are going to end it here, and I'll see you tomorrow. May God bless you all in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen.